Check this shit out. If you've ever wondered what the ugliest cover art is for an NES game, well, it's not Kid Clown, but man, it's close. Looking like his clown crush finally noticed him, but was actually waving at someone else behind him instead. Nah, dude, she's not into you or those garbage pail looking hands you got. Kid Clown was originally a Disney game released for the Famicom Mickey Mouse 3 Yume Fusen. And for some unknown reason, when it came to America, they reskinned it with this baby juggalo. This series has a really convoluted history, as the first two Mickey Mouse games were reskinned as Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle 1 and 2 on the Game Boy, but weirder than that was Part 4, which starred Mickey in Japan, Garfield in PAL regions, and Peter Venkman in North America. What a spread! Then, Kid Clown split off to form its own Crazy Chase franchise, with sequels on the Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, PlayStation, and N64. Man. That's a whole video topic I'll have to come back to another time. Back to the NES, the story is that Mr. and Mrs. Clown, accompanied by their children, Kid and Baby, are standing out in the rain in Kansas when the night mayor approaches, steals Kid's family, and now it's up to KK to get them back. Holy shit, guys. Kid Clown from Kansas? I'd always joke that this is a children's game secretly masquerading as a recruiting vehicle for the KKK, but by god, it's actually true! This is one of the rarest games on the NES, a fact I didn't realize at all, even in my heavy collecting days. I have to imagine consumers took one look at this picked last in dodgeball guy, meekly saying, hey, I'm a game too, give me a try, and then moved right along to something like Contra. Were they right, or am I merely projecting? Let's find out. Well, honestly, it's a decent platformer. The controls utilize a unique idea in that Kid Clown attacks with balloons which can be thrown one at a time or held in front of him and released when needed. When you hold on to the balloon, not only are you better prepared to hit a squirmy enemy, but you also now float as you jump and you'll need this ability to cross certain wide pits. However, holding this balloon also makes Kid Clown slower, so there are times where it's not advantageous to hold on to it, as you'll need to be quick to avoid things like these collapsing bridges. You can also drop the balloon on the ground and use it as a trampoline to reach higher platforms. Neat! There's a few things lying around here and there, like this lightning that makes you invincible, or this question mark which has random effects, including the old reverse controls trick, like when you're hopped up on goof gas in Rocky and Bullwinkle. There's also these strawberries, which are currency for the bonus game at the end of each stage, where you play this gallery-style shooter. The strangest aspect of the inventory is that these strawberries are called chips. No idea what that's supposed to mean. However, I do love that your number of remaining lives are referred to as kids. I don't know why, but that's pretty funny to me. Damn, clown! Seven kids? You need to wrap it up, Kay. So yeah, you balloon your way through these generic levels, beat a boss animal, try your luck at the bonus stage, and then you land at what appears to be a stage select, but is actually just showing you how many levels there are. That's pretty lame. How could you not think this was going to be a Mega Man style stage select here? The graphics are pretty plain, and Kid Clown looks like a muddled smudge on the screen, kind of like someone stepped on a blueberry. There are some cool transitions between levels that mirror some of the Mode 7 blast processing effects that the Super Nintendo and Genesis were showing off at the time. Not at all to their level, but still pretty impressive for the NES. The mid-level cutscenes are also pretty decent, at least visually, the story is still dumb as shit. However, some of the other sprite work is pretty decent and varied, similar to late-life NES titles like Panic Restaurant and Bonk's Adventure. Like if you shoot this snake, he swallows the balloon. If you hit him again, he's dead, but if you wait too long, he spits the balloon back at you. That's a neat touch! Then there's some cool camouflage enemies like these praying mantises or these teleporting chameleons. Also, check out this little guy who hatches from an egg. That has to be the tiniest enemy I've ever seen in an NES game. Adorable! There's also this... Good God, what is this monstrosity? I'd guess it's one of those wacky inflatable men you see outside of car washes, but it looks more like someone who shouldn't be allowed within 500 feet of a playground. Seriously, this is the absolute best thing about Kid Clown. There's so much zany nuance put into these enemy designs, I could literally spend the whole video talking about ice skating witches, snails that throw their own shell that's actually a lollipop, and look out Kid Clown, it's the letter B!
Oh no! Uh-oh, now the letter A wants a piece. Oh shit, never mind. Get out of there, buddy. The boss enemies are equally cool looking, like this Cyclops who drops pillars on you. And hey, even a realistic Sonic the Hedgehog. There's also this fish boss whose main strategy is to try to trigger your clown epilepsy. Man, Japan just did not understand what flashing lights could do to children back in the day. All the bosses are incredibly easy, often opening themselves up to repeated balloon blasts with no attempt to fight back. At the end, you'll even have to face the world's least intimidating boss gauntlet, where you've got to sleepwalk through these fights once again. Yawn. Overall, yeah, this game is something, all right. There's a lot of interesting enemy designs, the bonus stage is pretty fun and challenging, and the music is surprisingly jamming considering the clown theme of this game. Also, I do really like the way the balloon works, kind of forcing you to think more about your attacking and platforming approaches, and whether to chuck away or hang on for extra floatiness. But otherwise, Kid Clown in Nightmare World is just another run-of-the-mill platformer on a system chock full of them. And while the constant power-ups and gave up years ago boss fights make the challenge incredibly easy, on the NES that just means it's mildly difficult compared to the Castlevanias of the world. I'd have to imagine if they'd stuck with the Mickey Mouse license that this would probably have sold more units at the time, and maybe even be fondly remembered by some people today, but as it stands, Kid Clown remains mired in obscurity. Hey y'all, if you're a fan of my channel and want to see more, I'm streaming a different game every Thursday here on YouTube at 9pm Eastern Time, so come and hang out! Also, if you want to see more videos and also support me personally, head on over to patreon.com slash where I'm making a bonus video every week. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Until next time.